हेलो हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग कैन यू हियर मी Fine. So this is the model of tree girder. So giving the construction stage analysis, first we have to define the group function. So these are the groups which is, which is uh, located under the tree manner. That is the structure group, boundary group, load group, and tendon group. These groups are creating and connecting with the model, and we are keep on activating and deactivating these groups according to the construction sequences. Now. this is a structure group now what is your construction process at the site we have to simulate that situation now here i am creating two groups that is new that is your t girder and then second one is a diaphragm so diaphragm the two section we have created so this model i have to connect accordingly i can see in uh, 3d view this left view and i'm selecting only the main girder okay let me check it in the plan view in the plan view i'm selecting the main girders and this main girder has to connected with the T girder group, and then the cross members, along with the dummy members, what we discussed earlier, as well as the main diaphragm section, has to connect with the diaphragms. All together, we are applying over there, and then the support condition. These two end supports, support nodes, are connected with the. support group for that i have to create the group name for that that is support and links these two things okay now the support nodes are here we have connected the supports and drag and drop so that the support condition will be assigned to this support group and similarly for the link group these two nodes having link connectivity and just drag and drop so that the link property will be assigned to this now let's go back to the work and see the support condition and what is the group it's assigned to that just right click in the supports and seeing the table we can see this is showing the group is support this is support to be a support group i'm just changing it this is a support group just copy and paste this are the support group now this elastic link right click go to table and this one is a links one so when i drag and drop it automatically assign the group name uh, once again we have to verify it and then check whether it's the uh, the group name is uh, properly assigned or not a next case is a loading condition what are the loads we have applied earlier that has also has to be connected with the groups now these are the static loads first one is a static load self weight right click go to properties this is the self weight which we applied earlier now this uh, group name was default okay so this also we have to be connect so in the group name load group right click i am giving the load case name is self weight or cross barrier or whatever the name we provided and we can provide it other by what about the name we can this name is for just a reference only and then prestress this three load cases we have defined so the same three load cases i have defined it over here now we can see here we have the cross barrier load and the prestress load okay and when it comes to the cross barrier load it is a element beam load type you can just right click from the existing loads you can go to the table 
Now we can see this entire loading information in the form of tables and go to the last column for every input, the last column is the group name, select SSADL, okay, and then copy paste and then all the loads are connected with the SADL load group. Now, so this is completed and next is uh, the pre-stressed loads. Now this is the pre-stressed loads, go to table, we have uh, four cables, now we can just select the load case name over there. So this is the four cables and now you know for example we have connected the four cables and you know generally we will be having uh, three, four cables as it depends on the depth of the girder over there. For example we created the four cables over there. Now, now all the structures, supports and links and then the finally the load cases are connected with the groups finally. And this tendon group I have not created because if you are not creating the tendon group it automatically show the result for, for all the cables individually or otherwise it will show the pre-stress loss calculation as per the uh, group only. So anyhow I, I want to check the result in the form of a, a table for individual cables so that's why we can keep it as it is over there. So uh, that was the purpose. Now we will see the things one by one now. Now, so the structure group is connected and so everything is connected. Now we have to define the construction stage analysis. Yeah, let me open the Excel sheet for this. Now, the one which you are seeing, this is the construction stage analysis uh, Excel sheet. Okay, for an example, now here, for example, this is the construction stage over there. And this is the three construction stages we have defined. These three construction stages we have defined. So the stage one is 30 days duration, stage two is 30 days, stage three is 30 days. And we can make one more stage, that is stage four for 10,000 days for the long term loss calculation now. And also the structure activation, now see the structure group which is activated in 10 days, 10 day of construction stage. Or, or in other way, when we activating the girder or deck, the age of concrete is 10 days. And then the load group, we are activating self weight at the first day of first construction stage and the pre-stress is activating at the 10th day of first construction stage and then SIDL, superimposed dead load or the craft barrier load which is activating at the last day of stage 2. So how the program is calculating the other information? Now here we are seeing it. So when I'm activating the member, it attain the 10 day strength. Now this first column, this one, it is showing when the structure is casting over there, the casting at the ground level. When the structure is active, uh, casting at the ground level, after 10 days we are lifting the segment and placing at the actual support. That is the age of concrete is 10 days when may activating the member. That's what it's showing here. The structure group days 10 days. That is the actual age of concrete. And then first day, this is the construction duration starts. This is the stage one duration which is 30 days. Okay. This 30 days, I'm activating the load. The sulfate is activating at the first day of the construction stage and then 10th day of construction stage, I'm activating the pre-stress. When I'm activating the pre-stress, what is the actual age of concrete? It is nearly about 20 days. 
because when I'm activating the member, it is reaching 10 days strength. Again, I'm activating 10 days from the construction stage. Total age of concrete will be nearly 20 days. Okay, that is a PS loss. And then the at the end of construction stage, when I see the result, it will be the PS loss for this duration. That is your this duration. That is your 20 days. So end of first construction stage, when we check the PS loss calculation, this will be for 20 days. And similarly, this is the second construction stage, which is a uh, uh, again 30 days duration so total duration of the construction stage is 30 days plus 30 days so totally it is showing 60 days and then if it is a stage wise processing generally for you know uh, if the girder is having uh, multiple cables all the cables cannot be stressed at the same time so that so that we will be uh, activating in stages. So a second set of uh, set of cable which I'm activating at tenth day of second construction stage again. At the end of second construction stage, the second stressing PS2, I will get the loss of 20 days. That is PS2 loss of for 20 days. Again, if I check the result for first cable at the end of second construction stage, I will get the precious loss of that 20 days plus this second duration 30 days totally is 50 days. So total loss for the first cable will be 50 days and second cable will be 20 days. Again similarly for third stage this is for another 30 days and SADL I am activating at the here it is last day of second stage last day of second stage that is you were supposed to be here okay last day of second stage and third stage we are giving 90 days but generally the last two days has to be a little longer because for calculation of long term loss we should give the time duration for you know, nearly about 10,000 days for an example the code also suggesting the minimum should be uh, 10,000 days that's what the code specific over there Okay, fine. So the long term is 30 days. Now we will consider the same construction stage, three construction stages, stage three days, sorry, 30 days, stage two, 30 days, stage three, 30 days, and one more stage four. We'll consider for 10,000 days for long term loss. Fine. Now let's come to the uh, construction stage. I mean, uh, construction stage input in the software, and that for this calculation, we have to give the information about the creep and shrinkage in the compressor strength parameters as per the standard. Now this is software. I'm just changing the unit to Newton millimeter and then property wise now this is the property of the time dependent material property so I'm just selecting the creep and shrinkage property and this is a creep and shrinkage I'm giving the name as a C and yes And as per the European standard, so the uh, compressive strength of the concrete at 28 days. What are the age of concrete we mentioned? So accordingly, we have to select it. Now, what is the concrete? This one, it is your C3037. So I have to provide the same property over there. Sorry, European standard.
name is C and S, it is 37. And relative humility is 70 percentage, notional size of member. This as per the formula, uh, we have to calculate it and entering 1000 millimeter. And the type of cement is class N, and type of code is uh, it is for the concrete bridges. Now the age of concrete at the beginning of shrinkage is 30 days, 3 days because the before 3 days it's a curing stage so it's the, it is generally in the liquid state of the creep coefficient so it's acting just 3 days from the beginning. So 3 days onwards when it calculate. So this is the graph is forming up for the creep coefficient and the shrinkage time. And then click OK. And the second property I have to define for the compressive strength for parameter. Again go to compressive strength. Add I'm giving the short name for that and then select the European standard this is the STK plus delta F it has to be 37 plus delta F value we had calculate and add actual uh, mean compressive strength of the concrete we have to enter it here. And then your uh, the compressive strength variation according to uh, the number of days. So we are reaching the 100% strength in 28 days. When I'm entering in the construction stage, as the age of concrete is 10 days, then at the first construction stage, the program has to select only 10 days strength, actual strength of the concrete in the member. It will be considered for the analysis. Again, these two parameters, which is related to material. So this creep and shrinkage in compressive strength, which has to be connected with the material property. So it's a material link. I'm just selecting the creep and shrinkage function, what we have derived, and the compressive strength parameters, and which has to connect with the concrete properties. And select and add. So this is added now. Now whenever I'm activating this concrete property, automatically this calculation will be takes place. Now, this is done. So, I'm again, I'm changing the unit to kilonewton meter. And then, go to the construction stage. Go to load, uh, construction stage, define CS. That's a different construction stage. Here we are defining the construction stage. This is the stage one, and now you can refer this uh, construction stage table. We can keep it the side by side, which will be helpful. Now we are going to give a uh, input according to this table. Now you are seeing the stage one, stage two, stage three. Now here the duration, the name we have to define as a stage one, stage two, stage three, and then construction duration. Now, now this is our element and boundary and loads. The structure group will be display at the element group, and the support and links will be appear in the boundary group. And load group, we have the three loads, that is sulfate, uh, cross barrier load, and the pre-stress. And this is the activation table, and this is the deactivation table. So we have to activate and deactivate, and according to the contract sequences, this deactivation uh, function is for to activate your temporary supports or temporary loads over there. Now let's uh, provide the information about this uh, construction stage according to this reference Excel table. Now, the name is stage one, duration is 30 days. The age of concrete for, yeah, for the first one, uh, T girder, I'm activating at the age of 10 days. Okay, I'm activating. And next is the boundary, 
So support and links both are original. So I'm just selecting both the things in original shape. And then load is activating the first day, the self weight is activating. So it is selecting active first the first day and selected over there. In load activation, we can see only the first and last in between. If I want to activate any load information, that additional step we have to give here at the top. Days 10, apply. 10 days is apply. Now we can select the pre-stress, we can apply at the 10th stage. At the 10th day of first construction stage, we can add the pre-stress. This is done and then apply it. And stage 2, again 30 days. Here we are applying the diaphragm section at 10 days strength and the boundary conditions are already activated so we no need to again, uh, again activate. Because once the NA group is activated, it will be remain in activation position in further stages. Again, when it comes to the loading part, the SIDL we are activating at the last day of second construction stage. Add. And the third construction stage, again, all the things are activated. One more time, just give it 30 days and click OK. And then stage four, to get the long term, so I'm giving duration is 10,000 days. Click OK. Now we can see this is the construction stage information. Stage 1 is 30 days, stage 2 is 30 days, stage 3 is 30 days, stage 4 is 10,000 days. And there's a total cumulative days is 30 days, 30 plus 30, 60 days, 60 plus 30, 90 days, 90 plus 10,000, 10,090 days totally. This, this is the four construction duration we have defined it. So this is the final one. Now this next thing is uh, the construction stage is done now. Now we can do the analysis part. Go to analysis, perform analysis. This is the process it's showing. The moving load is connecting now. It's successfully completed. Now, when I see the result, now I can see the result for the construction stages. Now here we can see the three, four construction stages and a minimum, maximum, and post construction stage level. So. The result wise, I am showing the reaction forces. So this is the individual load cases as well as the load combination. We can extract the result for any load combination, extracting first combination itself and the values and legend. So this is the uh, reaction forces and the red point which is showing the maximum of all the reaction points. This point is getting the higher one. And the same thing we can extract in the form of tables, go to result result table, beam, forces and the reaction we can get it over here select any load combinations or load cases click OK we can check the result in the form of tables again this table is compatible with the Excel sheet you can just right click export to Excel sheet you can save in Excel sheet fine and finally we can make this uh, table uh, in the report file so that for report generation, we have to save all the table values, graph, as well as the result contours. And the next result is deformation, select deformation contour, select the load cases. And this is the contour value for deformation, this is a deformed shape. And when it comes to deformed shape, we can extract the result in different construction stages. As I said, here we can say access the stages, the stage one. When I check the stage one, it is showing the hogging because of the first stage it's having the pre-stress. Now it is showing the dead load, primary effect and secondary effect and summation. In summation case, it is showing the hogging one. So dead load is normal one. Okay. Now, now we can see the model wise. In the stage one, there's only T 
trigger that was there, the cross beam is not connected now. Okay, because the when you check in construction stage, I have just activated the cross beams, the diaphragm section and stage two. So that's why it is it is showing only T girder in stage one and T girder with diaphragm and stage two. Now you can see this is a stage one, only T girder, and stage two it is with diaphragms. And then stage three, only the load activation was there. And then stage four, only for the result, we have defined one more construction stages. This is the normal post construction stages now. And then the one important thing in the construction uh, stages for the PSC member, we can check the result of the precess loss calculation. Go to table, tendon, tendon loss. So this is the pre-stressed cable losses for T1, that is the cable number T1, this is the stage 1. So the stage 1, what is showing, this is the remaining force in the member after friction and slip. This is elastic deformation loss, this is creep and shrinkage loss, this is relaxation loss. So this is showing the loss for the T1 cable at stage 1. For the same cable, if you want to see the result for stage 2, select stage 2, apply, your losses is keep on increasing it because it, it is with respect to time. Again, same T1 table at stage 3, it's further it's increasing it. Again, for stage 4, increasing it. The same way we can extract the pre-stress loss calculation in the form of table for all the cables and all the construction stages. That is the purpose of doing a construction stage analysis and we can check, check all the results in different construction levels. Now uh, the analysis is done, now we will update the load combination and go for the design one. Now the load combination for concrete design we already created and then I'm just deleting it and updating with a new, new load combination with construction stage. That is static case and uh, construction case. So this is the load combinations. Now we will come to the design part, PSC, this is a PSC design. Select the code, hero code 2, selected parameters. Now here the error code conditions and your input parameters consider the tendon uh, in tensile zone and the output parameters ultimately now the PSC design material this is a concrete we have selected the material for concrete as well as for steel for the main bar and sub bar. A dummy member is not required because it's a dummy. And next is a design output position. The design position I can select any any one member to design it. Particularly, I'm just selecting this center two main girders and select apply. And similarly for the output position, I'm selecting the same two members, apply. So serviceability load combination, the load combination from the for the cozy permanent and frequent and characteristics, it will be selected from the serviceable load combinations automatically. And then short term load case and long term it's identified by itself from the loading type and exposure class we have to define select and this is the type, exposure class type, we have to select the appropriate one and then apply. And next in the shear connector, it is not majorly uh, thing yeah. and if you have, if you know the interface of shear values, the angle of uh, the shear connectors, then you can type it otherwise it's, it will do automatically. Okay, fine. And next is 
the perform design. When to do the perform design, it will do the design for the selected member. If you are not selecting any member, then it will start doing for all the PSC members. That will take a little longer time. So that's why I selected, for example, this uh, only two segments I have selected for the design purpose. Now you can see the generation of PSA design is completed. Now this Excel report. Click the Excel support report, then it will show your result in the form of Excel report. Let me it is preparing the seat. This will take few minutes. Let me do it again. Okay, in the meantime, uh, do you have any uh, questions? You can type your questions in the question box. Generally, this uh, design report it will show uh, in Excel sheet with uh, your actual uh, the formulas and the tables and what is your code number number. Everything in detail will be displayed in the uh, report. Another one, this report, as you're seeing in the report in the tree menu, this will show your result in different forms. Suppose you want to see the deformation contour for any load cases. With a deformed position, this picture with legend or values, you can just write dynamic report image. This is the analysis report uh, formation actually. So this, this is a support condition if you suppose if you want to check this table. Yeah. So about this table you can input in the dynamic report table. This is your support conditions. And then elastic link, this is your input file. Similarly for tendon losses, this is tendon losses. Suppose you want to add this rip this standard loss table in your reports, you can just right click dynamic report table, you can add it. So finally, what we'll do, uh, this program is taking, let me keep this icon here, and uh, tools, dynamic report generator. This will open new document, 
here we can make the analysis report. The one which is going on, this is your design report, this is your analysis report. The analysis report will open the MS Word file in Midas interface. Now, okay, let me complete this one. Okay, in the report file, and all the saved pictures or tables that will come in the report window. Now here what we can do with the saved file we can just drag and drop your saved files it will automatically form your customized report now. And this is your table values which we calculated or which we saved from the model. You can just drag and drop it will form your own analysis format. Okay now the design is completed let me minimize and then I will show this is the cross action information. Now this is the customized report formation. Now we can save this file. Give the name. And then once this file is saved, you can close this report here. Okay. Now how the report is, uh, looks like, I will just open the saved Word file. This is the report file which is made in Word. This is your picture, this is your uh, tables and this is your cross-section properties. Okay, now similarly we can save all the results in the form of tables, color contours and graph. We can make your analysis report. This is the input file and analysis report. Okay, and how the design report looks like? The design was completed. I'll open the design report. This is the design report. This is the detail. Now you are seeing the design report file as per Euro standard. Okay. And this is the design report will be looks like. This is the we have selected is some number of elements. This is the third element I10 and J10, 16th element I10 and J10. Now we can see the element number and position. This is your design condition. The ultimate moment resistance for the positive moment and negative moment. And your uh, formula which is appearing here. And your code number and class number which is apply, which is appearing here. This is the series which is showing entire information with the formula and the proper calculation for that. Fine. And then this is the checking checking condition that is your bending stress in the table. This is your stress here resistance. And this is the torsional resistance. This is stress at construction stage and this is stress for tender for compression and tension for the different uh, load combination and this is the principal stress. This is your member design. Uh, this member design will be looks like our actually how we are submitting the report in the uh, you know our own customer.
I mean, in one design report, it will looks like to be exactly similar to that. Now you can see if I print it, if I click print option, then my report will be looks like. Now you can see the print preview. I will just show you. Now you can see the print preview. It will be looks like an actual design report. This we can directly submit to the client because it has all the information, design conditions, tables, formulas, and the code number and class number, everything. So this is the uh, design of uh, the PSC T Beam Girder Bridge. Do you have any questions? Yeah, actually uh, the the dimensions BL4 and BR4 when we are checking if your, your cross section is unsymmetric then we have to define your dimension left side and right side. So BL4 is the left side dimension, BR4 is the right side dimensions. This is just a width only for the unsymmetric cross sections. And Mr. Uh, Daddy Shaham, and I have replied by email also. And this information is basically for the unsymmetric sections. Yesterday, I have sent a mail to uh, all your engineers, and uh, in the mail, I have just attached the previous webinar video and uh, the answer for the questions, and also. And I, I, I have given some, uh, you know, practice thing uh, with the example of this video. We can refer the video and create your own geometry with the help of that and send to me. I will just uh, check how much we are uh, learned with that. Then based on our, you know, how much you can able to model it, then I can organize more webinars for your team. That is the purpose of that. Okay, fine. If you have any further questions, you can write mail to me. Okay, I'm just uh, typing my informations over here. I hope everyone knows my name. I'm just giving. My name is Vinayakamurti, and my lady is. memdalmedasati.com and my Skype ID medasati underscore memdal. So you can contact me in this. Then we can discuss more, and then now we will see you again in our next webinar. Thank you very much for attending. See you again.